if he's going to do a warden walk with only a unicorn just relied on the rage gem to keep him up here now he's going to go ahead and dive his heroes in and he will not use the warden with the lalo klaus is thinking outside of the box here we are down to the final week of the fire clash league of the group stages as navi aims to go undefeated in their group they're taking on the i think korean clan love is that is that korean letters there on their name i'm not sure i think it is uh but i don't know much about this other team here but we know all about navi and we'll see what they can do here as we have the underdog team going in for the first attack of the war rub rub making his way with a queen charge directly attacking the town hall king able to get the defensive queen out of the bottom there but he doesn't get inside of the base there to get anything past that he just got an archer tower on the outside not the highest value out of the king but at least he gets the defensive queen out of the way there and there's definitely some value with that wall breaks through wall breaker is successful goes invisible and disables the single inferno for a moment but the wall breaker barely got the wall open almost didn't make it as it went right through the town of poison a bit of a risk on that one but the queen's healers just took an eagle artillery strike so they're very very vulnerable keep a close eye on them takes any more damage them a single red air bomb could set them over the edge and make every single one of them go down gotta be very very careful here but you gotta be also careful if we're gonna use the invisibility on the queen when she's the only thing on the board there because if that eagle artillery activates and the healers are not also covered by the invisibility then that's gonna happen otherwise the eagle artillery would just sit there and target nothing but he does have the main force moving in from the left side there and he's got a he's got an apprentice warden there boosting the hp of the room riders for hero equipment we see the life gem i guess healing tome I actually, I don't know if I agree with the life gem here. I think a life gem is kind of a waste. I think a rage gem would have been very, very good there because you're already running. If you invested the space to be able to bring a an apprentice warden, then I think bringing a life gem on top of that is kind of just doing the same thing twice. Uh, one more rear rider there. The queen ends up getting through there, but she did end up losing all of her healers, but she did end up sustaining her queen ability. However, she dies through ability, and the underdog team is going to start off this war against Navi with a miss. However, let's get into Pete Castro. Diving in with a super bowler attacker. A bunch of grass killies ended up popping on that flame finger, but he quickly gets up under control there with a couple archers. Couple barbarians in the area there as well, testing for any traps in front of the flame there. Make sure we don't have a test farm popping on us. But at the same time, Warden Walk begins over to the far left side of the base here. And this is Pete Castro's main account there. And so we are looking at that level 27 giant gauntlet and the level 18 rage vial. And I saw one of the person in the pro community who has gemmed all their equipment to max, and it was Bernal. Which is kind of funny because Bernal replaced p castro when p castro left what is now anarchia previously class champs after they won the world championship so bernal steps into p castro's spot and then wails out a bit there and is able to now have two players in the pro community that have completely maxed out equipment so he's got the archer or the healer puppet i mean he really likes that healer puppet i don't know why he uses that healer puppet so much here but look at this he's also nearly maxed out his healing tome as well now so yeah Pete Castro is on the move here for maxed out equipment but super bowlers are on the move to charge the core of the base here healing tome with super bowlers is very 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 strong because rage gem goes to waste when we're burning all these rage spells already if we're gonna be able to form the funnel with the warden and the or with the uh, warden and the uh, flame flinger then we don't really need a rage gem because we're going to be just stacking rages and we want all the extra healing from a rage spell not from a rage gem because we want to make sure that we can get more healing output while we go into the meat of the base there but the king under the invincibility from the giant gauntlet stays right at the lead of the pack there and he's still at almost full hp <laughs> i mean it is definitely massively advantageous right now to put the king into the main group there. Well, he's got that giant gauntlet and he's able to basically stop all the damage incoming at him right now. You can make so that he can just get out in front of the bowlers and he can tank all the way through the base there and they just don't die. So there we go. Swag some spells. Pete Castro starts us off with a triple for Navi. 
Bruce will make the next attack here for love. It looks like he's got dragons and inferno dragons and dragon riders and root riders. All right. Quite the mix up here. But ultimately, it's going to be about the setup what he can do with the queen charge. So queen just going to make her way to the very top of the base there. She's got a recall. So we can charge in, take the monolith down. Maybe get the invisibility tower triggered. Maybe he can pop his queen ability and spawn some extra healers, apparently. And run that level 15 healer puppet as she dies anyways. Well, at least we got a unicorn walk. <laughs> oh, rip the dream. All right. Well, <laughs> wow. Well, at least he'll get to the town hall here. He's got a lot of force going into it. He will take the blast and the poison. And he'll lose a lot of troops that go to the core. Down south, Expos will lock onto the flame flinger, open up here. And this one was an absolute disaster. He had healers inside of his flame flinger. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Kind of like that. Healers and a flame flinger. I mean, if the queen charge would have worked on this attack here, then maybe we would have seen something very cool. All right, next attack is live. Let's see how this queen died real quick. Queen. Right there. Queen, nope, that's not it. There, she went to ability. Then she marched her way. Okay, I have no idea what killed her. <laughs> I have no idea what killed her. I thought it was the monolith that killed her through her ability, but I have no idea how she went down right there. Was it the mortars? Mortars killing a queen through a villain? That's something you don't see every day, right? I guess it would have to be multiple mortar shots and a bomb going off. I saw that she was standing on top of a giant bomb. However, very, very unlucky here for love. I mean, queen dying like that and then an eagle artillery strike taking the healers on the first attack. Like, maybe there was some potential in those attacks here. Like, I don't want to count this team out because, like, they're doing some cool things here. But they're having some very serious problems at the same time. However, Gaku making his way in with the Queen charge into Lalo. Looks like he's got a blimp. Queen just gonna be able to walk right in there with the King cutting off her pathing and forces her in. He's got two super wall breakers. Go right into the ricochet cannon and the multi arch tower here at this wall break. The wall breakers go to the left here. Where's it going? Oh, okay, that's a problem. All right, well, wall breaker didn't cooperate there. The Queen. Needs to try again. Now with that wall open, the next one will have a better chance of going in, and it is. Healers taking damage from the multi arch tower. And the queen will step forward. The wall breaker was successful. Make the healers invisible. All right. All right, Gaku. Hold it together here. Very difficult charge right now. Healers getting damaged again. Gets off of the ice golem. Rages at the queen. Get that multi archer tower down. Queen is on. Uh oh! Gaku will go ahead and blimp the town hall. If he doesn't get the town hall to blimp right here, this is one star. Blimp arriving. Blimp lands in the town hall. Sweeper knocks it back. Gets knocked away again. Lands on top of the king. Does get the town hall down. Okay. No one star risk on that one, but I don't know if this can triple anymore. He'll freeze up where the queen left off there and the Roar champion will make her way past that ricochet cannon. She's got the spirit fox there. She will stay alive for just a moment. The Spirit Fox stays alive, most importantly. Making so that she can continue to go invisible. But fighting off the Ice Golems over the side of the base there. Got to get past the single Inferno and the Monolith with that pack of balloons. But the main pack is making its way towards the Multi-Arch Tower. Monolith is the biggest threat left on the base right now. And he's got a lot of archers. Or so he's got a lot of uh, minions and pups over there that are making their way into it. Monolith is engaged there by a couple of balloons to get a little bit of damage. But everybody steps back over. And Gaku... Loses the queen charge, but doesn't lose control of the attack there, and he gets a triple anyways for Navi. Mosala, now in for love. Please don't have another problem with the queen. Not three times in a row, all right? Let's get one on the board here. Let's see if they can take out Pete Castro. We do see a bunch of black arrow bombs on the left side of the base here, and he will find even more. Holy black air bombs right there. He never even got the air defense down. But he still decides to put the blimp over that area. Could have invested more balloons, but he'll go ahead and drop in a Yeti bomb. I mean, obviously, P. Castor was prepared to receive a blimp right there or a queen charge. And so, tons and tons of black air bombs were stacked in the area, but the raged up Yetis 
take out the expo and take out the monolith very very good setup here all right now this team is in business as they do finally have the start of attack go right but it is going to be a queen with the healers making her way north here imagine the root riders will go and pair with her but already used a full minute of the attack here so he's move quickly let's get off these ice golems and finally get into the base as long long setup there but we'll see how far he can go now all right well I'll break down the line do you put the root riders over the top of the queen I feel like you do I feel like you save the queen the queen can make her way towards the town hall and you put the root riders right over where the king is right now the queen is taking the scenic path here she's not going to walk into the inferno I'll break again this one going to the rare champion pad there. Frees up the Inferno. And he's approaching one minute left on the clock right now. Moving very, very, very slow. All right. Hold together here. Poison Tower hits the healers. Black Air Bombs hit the healers. Here comes the Root Riders in from the left side. All right. I think the healers are going down to the Poison Tower. Oh, man. They're not having any luck with healers. There goes all the healers. The poison tower claims them all. The queen charge is going to quickly come to a stop here. And it looks like it is potentially another miss here for love. Love is definitely struggling against their bases today. Satan's is in for Navi. The newest addition to the Rost Builder. Or the, the Rost. I said, I tried to say Roster and Base Builder at the same time there. He's a new addition on the Roster. But he's also the base builder for navi he was the base builder for class champs when they went out there and won the world championship and today he's going to just spam in some root riders opposite of the town hall with a whole bunch of valkyries in the mix as well and just charge it all the way across this base here our ability gives a protection initially level uh 15 and uh a healing or a life gem as well no uh Apprentice Warden there, but level 21 Giant Gun, the King of Hobbs ability, and start his way forward. And Queen, just sort of that level 18 invincibility vial. But the World Champion will start in over the left side of the base there, and will make her way to meet everybody at the back side of the base there. But he does ultimately cross the whole base here. He does reach the Town Hall. The King is able to take it down right there. And everybody else will now regroup on the left side of the base there, and hopefully this Root Rider will stay alive and keep giving Queen access across the base here. But I think she has access to everything that she's looking for. Is he okay here? Flamefinger working at the very bottom of the base there, getting the multi-arch towers down. Flamefinger getting low on HP now. We'll have whatever troops are inside of it. We're champion taking heavy fire there. Goes to ability and Spirit Fox went down. So she's not able to recover now. And she's going down. Flamefinger still working though. Double Expo is his biggest obstacle right now. Flamefinger will take one more shot here. We need to open up here. All right, Queen makes her way forward. I don't think he gets it, guys. I think he's going to fall short. <laughs> All right, well. At least Navi's doing good. They're, they're doing good. They can carry uh, their base builder. The reason uh, Satan's is stepping into the roster today, outside of his uh, normal role uh, doing base building, is because stars got spawned in a random spin. Let's take attack number one, two, and three as our warm-up attacks. And let's see if they can make one happen here, you know? They're kind of struggling. Navi's bases holding strong. Maybe a mix of uh, burn bases and whatnot. But, uh, you know, Navi is... Oh, okay. Loses that queen ability. A little bit off on the rage there. He put the rage a little bit too far forward. And now we got the wall breaker going off the rails over the left there to go into the test as the pop of that compartment. It's going to be dragon to make up for that. You'll get that other test of Dan. That's fine. But he's got another wall breaker and he can attempt to get. He's going for it now. And he is successful with that. And then I guess he could. I thought he would run the compartment there a little bit further there. Like I thought he would run all the way down the compartment. But he's actually ducking into this quarter here. So he should take the jump. So he's okay. He's okay. I don't know what the purpose of the wall breakers were if we we're going to jump anyways, though. That seems like a little bit pointless there. But he did almost have his healers get hit by that Eagle Artillery Strike. They do veer off now. What are they even targeting over here? Oh, an archer. Okay, that works. Um, but healers are very, very vulnerable right now. Queen already burned her ability. She does secure the tower takedown, so... 
He has a chance. Healers are gonna die here very, very shortly. The queen's going down and the healers get wrecked. Okay. Up to the river riders. Can't go to the top side of the base there. We'll wrap around. Able to get a lot up there. Test is popping. That's gonna cause these river riders to backtrack potentially. What does he do about that? King at least takes the, the relatively inside path there. Not all the way inside, but level 15 giant gauntlet. Raise gem, boosting these river riders. Just staying out front here. Tank for the world champion. Boost the world champion's damage output. He's got an RC ability. He'll pop it now. Spirit Fox will go invisible and keep the world champion alive for a little bit longer there. But the Spirit Fox does ultimately go down. And now it's down to the king. Do you think he can finish it? I don't know that he can. I think he's done. All right, well. Hey, where's all those people who say that uh, Town Hall 16 needs to have its offense nerfed because when we see a normal team going in and making normal mistakes then they end up missing a bunch but when you see the top 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 tier 0.0000001% of players like Navi going in and uh, having their core roster get triples then it was like oh town hall 16 is too easy <laughs> Kazuma in with electro dragons we got clone we got super barbarians as his super troop selected and we also got a blimp here it is like look at this base here every single building all the way through here is chainable to the building next to it there is a huge amount of chain value in every different direction off of every single building so a handful of good e-drag chains are going to leave this base disabled very, very quickly. But the blimp will sail through. Baby Dragon working on the bottom side of the funnel there. All the E-Drags get the side-by-side -side rage, early ward ability. Warden is running life gem to give these E-Drags a little bit more uh, HP pull. As they charge into the heaviest part of the base there, they quickly get into Clan Castle. He does ultimately drop that blimp down early. And he's able to get the monolith down with it, so that works out. But he does not get the Town Hall. Probably one of the town hall, right? It's fine. The heroes can handle it. They're getting he's getting so much value out of the E-Drags right now that the heroes should be able to just handle the other side of the base there because there's not a lot over there. Everything was concentrated on the bottom side of the town hall. And with the E-Drags able to get that much value, you can miss the town hall with the blimp and still be fine. RC cuts across. RC running Diggy. Love the Diggy. I still like the Diggy more than the Spirit Fox. Like I think the only time, in my opinion, that you should run Spirit Fox. Is if you're doing like a full-on spirit walk or you are trying to trying to uh get the uh, if you have the the diggy on the board or something like that that's what i'm trying to say um but either way looks like he's able to push his way through the big defenses one more expo stands on his path here king's still looking nice and healthy warden will refuse to go down there claims out the last of the major defenses and it looks like he's able to secure the talent takedown without any issue, and easily walk his way to a triple. All right, nice job here, Kazuma. Another triple on the board for Navi. They're going for 14. A full defensive shutout for Navi as we go into the final attack as the final core member of Navi's roster steps onto the field. Welcome in, Klaus, and welcome in a random Super Valkyrie. What's he gonna use that for? All right, Klaus, all right, let's see what we got here. We got the Queen. Or see the warden, I mean, on the left side of the base, they're gonna start in with the walk. Got a level nine race gem, maxed out a turtle tome. Base equipment onto the queen, and level 18 equipment onto that king with the giant gauntlet. All right, warden will connect from the outside of the base there. Now, warden is running the unicorn, and that means that he does not need healers. And that means that he can do a raised up unicorn walk all the way in to connect to the lightning. I like that. That's going to save a ton of spells here and a free funnel in the process. And I mean, you know what? If he's going to do a warden walk with only a unicorn, just relied on the rage gem to keep him up here. Now he's going to go ahead and dive his heroes in and he will not use the Warden with the Lalo. Klaus is thinking outside of the box here and will do a Lalo in a completely different way than we're used to seeing. But he will go ahead and drop in onto the Town Hall. Yeti Bomb will take it out there. King with invincibility will surge out in front there. 
And he will just go in and tank everything as he continues to march his way forward. Barely taking any damage there with the king with that giant gauntlet. But he stays out in front of the queen. That's the most important thing. The queen and the... I guess he got the world champion down on defense. Was that his world champion? I, I couldn't even uh, tell if he deployed his world champion in there or not. I couldn't tell if it was the defensive world champion or the offensive world champion going down right there. But the queen staying alive. She still has her ability. She makes her way all the way to the multi-in front of the core of the base here. And... Man, he barely needs to do anything with his Lalo. <laughs> He's going to go ahead and swag the rest of his spells at the top of the base there. Easily walk his way through. And my god, Klaus. The, the man knows how to get some value with his heroes, to say the least. That's insane. That is definitely a unique way to approach a Lalo. And so he has some fun with that one. And he's got 14 stars for his team. The only person who doesn't triple in this war for Navi's roster is their base builder. So, I mean, he's doing some good work on base building, obviously, as we can tell over here. But GG Klaus, GG Navi, they are undefeated as they finish out the group stages of the Fire Clash League. And clearly, they're going to make it to the playoffs alongside with the second place team. Early attacks will be right behind them.